What is up, everybody? My name is Austin Buckner. Trevor Holder. Corey Boone. And this episode is very, very special because we are talking about our live event, the Ice Cream Social 2024. Uh... It is happening at the Warren Cultural Center in Greenfield, Iowa. Again, Saturday, June 22nd, 2024, the Ice Cream Social. Um, this is pretty big. It is. Pretty big stuff, you guys. We uh, we talk about stuff we're excited for. Mm-hmm. Um, people showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, the sponsors. sponsors. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sponsors, the vendors, the live band, the how podcast it came to guests, be. Yeah. How it came to be, the support of the Warren Cultural Center Board of Directors. We talk about it all. So if you're if you're wondering, you know, how do I find information about this crazy little live event you're doing? This is the podcast to come and reference. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, tickets go on sale. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, tickets go on sale tomorrow, uh, January 22nd. If you're listening to it on January 22nd or after, tickets are currently on sale. WarrenCulturalCenter.com under the tickets link, uh, there should be an Eventbrite.com link. Uh, on that website that will take you to where you can buy tickets. I do want to mention right off top in the intro, we also mentioned it on the podcast, but I want to make this perfectly clear. Your $10 ticket is for, is to get into the live podcast and the live band. That is from 7 to 11 p.m. That $10 ticket will get you in upstairs. We are treating the auditorium show and the after party as two separate things, yep. much like an auditorium show and an underground show would be. So the underground is strictly cash only, and it's cash only for concessions, which is soda and water and uh, and beer, and it is cash only for the door, $5 yep. at the door. So underground show, auditorium show, two separate things, yep. but still, if you go to both, Ten dollars and five dollars. It's still less than a normal ticket auditorium show anywhere else in in Warren Cultural Center. And We're trying, was, trying to make this as cheap as possible for yeah, everyone to show up. That was done by design. Done so by design. It, it's not breaking the bank, and um, you can still have the time of your life. And I and and like I said in the in the episode, ten dollar ticket to get in in hopes that you come early before the show starts, take a stroll through the vendors and buy some art, buy some jewelry, get your face painted. Mm -hmm. Um, God, if you're desperate enough, buy something from Isaac and Jordan at Too Many Words if it it tickles your fancy. I don't know why you ever would, but if you feel like it, if you feel like supporting two of the most insane, dumbest human beings I've ever met, feel free to do that as well. Those are my grandsons. You calm down. No, we we (laughs) We love them. them. Um, But yes, Please plan to be there. Plan to support the arts. Support our show of Dum Dum Stories. Support one of the coolest cover bands I've ever come across. And support yourselves. Support yourself having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a magical night. You can also check the description below as it will also have a link to where you can... Absolutely. Buy tickets. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, all of the information about the live event, I've set our website's homepage to be information about the live event. So ice cream Sunday podcast.com. There's Go no check excuse. It out. No excuse to not no know excuse. that this is happening. Yeah. We love you all. Buy tickets. Can't wait to see you there. wild statement to even make like i've always wanted to do a live event and i always wanted to do it in greenfield and the fact that we're able to do it in not just greenfield but this venue that when we were growing up as kids it was this i think it was a dream and at the time maybe even a bit of a pipe dream that it's like yeah, we're going to renovate the opera house. It's like, well, all right, sure you are. (laughs) 
And then it reopens in 2012, the year after I leave the area for good, you know? <laughs> they were like, keep it closed. <laughs> Austin's still here. <laughs> uh, and now we get to bring our brand of entertainment to the Warren Cultural Center. And I always said that in order to do an event like this, um, we have to get a venue that kind of understands our vision for this event. No, we don't. Because <laughs> I don't think the board of directors understands what we're doing at all. At least one of them does. But the thing is, they, we, they sat down with us. Trevor and I went and we met with the board of directors. Yep. And I don't think they fully understand what we wanted to do. But they understand passion. Because they're passionate about that building and oh, yeah. they're passionate about the entertainment that they bring to that building. They see that we're passionate about what we do and they're like, all right, let's try it. Yeah. The least we can do is try. And yep. just to give a little backstory of kind of how this whole thing came together with the board of directors, uh, we go in and we, we let them know this is what we want to do. And the board of directors the Warren Cultural Center basically tells us, sure, you can do it, but we don't have the money. Um, basically, our 2023-2024 schedule, it's already full, Yep. right? All of our sponsorship money is allotted for yep. other shows. So if you can go out before our next meeting and get committed, the amount of money it would take to book the live band that you want to book We'll think about it. I go, okay. <laughs> okay. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so in three days, I yeah. met, or uh, yeah, it was two days actually. Yeah. Friday night, I messaged the big uh, board of directors group chat that we're all in together because I'm on the board of directors now. And I said, uh, so we need $700 for this band. I go, okay. I have uh, like... Sixteen hundred dollars committed. <laughs> Do you think that'll be enough? And they were like, "Well, clearly he's serious about this. Yep. Clearly this isn't going away. Let's do it." Do you think that they said it's going to cost seven hundred dollars? Put that out there. I mean, yeah, they probably had all their money allotted, but like, do you think they did that without saying no to see how motivated you were? Like, rather than just being I, like, "No, I, we can't do so it." So I might have to bleep that out. How much it cost, but. Uh, I, I have worked with this band before. Okay. So when I worked at Pickleball Palace yep. in Pella, um, I booked them to come play a, one of our Friday Night Live events. Yeah. So I know I knew how much they, they cost. And I went to the board with that dollar amount and I said, Ice Cream Sunday doesn't necessarily need or want to make any money on this first event. We want to make this an annual thing. Yep. If it helps and... It, Brings on the cost. We don't need to get paid for this first event. We, but we want to turn this into an annual thing yeah. that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Really, the only expense is the band. Yep. This, and I'm the one that came to them and said, "This is how much the band costs." Okay. And they said, "We don't want to lose money, so you have to have sponsorship commitments for at least that dollar amount." Okay. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. And above and beyond that, gets used to bring in better, bigger, better entertainment for other shows. Yep. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I can do that. And then right away, of course, you know, TJ Thaddeus was like, so do you want to be on the, uh, the sponsorship council? Like, do you want to like, or not sponsorship, like the fundraising committee <laughs> for future, uh, for future programming years. And I was like, absolutely. Like this is my bread and butter. Like, yeah. At the heart of it all. Like I'm a salesperson, you know, yeah. and I'm, uh, this is my way of kind of selling, myself as a board of director and my way of selling ice cream Sunday and what we can do. And I guess, uh, this podcast will come out the day before we, um, put tickets on sale online, you know, pre-sell tickets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, gosh, I hope I've sold this well enough to where people <laughs> want, like want to buy tickets. Yeah. But, um, this is going to be, in my opinion, a one of a kind event, something that, you know, maybe Greenfield hasn't seen before. Of course they've had bands, of course they've had cover yeah. bands, but, but. To, to wrap up, to roll into all one big event, kind of an, 
a vendor art show kind of thing and a live podcast. They've certainly never done that before and a live band. And then after that, we all go downstairs and there's a DJ, like all yeah. of those elements combined. They've never seen anything like that. So the podcast, that episode, who's going to be on that? So Wendy Lane is going to be on that. So the whole theme of the show was a homecoming. And I wanted to originally do the event in like October, right? And have it be like homecoming season and have it be a homecoming for us. And then I realized, you know, like this is bigger than us. It's bigger than just mm -hmm. ice cream Sunday. So ice cream and a celebration. I thought, you know what? Why not do it the first weekend of June? Why not oh, do yeah. it? as a summer celebration. And then we can always remember that it's right around June 21st, 22nd, like right around, you know, when summer happens, it's always going to be the first weekend of summer if it becomes an annual event. So I started thinking like it's, it's bigger than us, but it does have to do something with homecoming and promoting that there are these opportunities for big city entertainment in a small town. Oh, yeah. And I started thinking, who are some of the really important and even maybe famous people from Greenfield. And so you start thinking about maybe former athletes or people that maybe gone into politics from Greenfield. Yep. And then it wasn't the board meeting for the board of directors for Warren cultural center. It was the meeting after that, but it's my first board meeting as a member of the board. I show up and there is, uh, a woman there that I feel like I, I've rec I recognize, like, I feel like I've seen her on social media and she's sitting in there and she's, she's there for a board meeting and she introduces herself as Wendy Lane. And I go, I know exactly who you are <laughs> because I am, I am someone who graduated from Nottoway Valley high school, Yep. then went into journalism, yep. did the journalism thing, decided journalism wasn't for me, came home. Wendy Lane did that, but on a much grander scale. Yeah. She left, she graduated from Greenfield High School, went to the University of Iowa to study journalism and became very successful at oh, it. Oh yeah. Internationally renowned Emmy award winning journalist decided I'm getting burnt out and came home to Greenfield. Wow. So this whole idea of this being a homecoming for us, this uh, is a homecoming for her. Yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. And you start thinking, okay, it's not enough to record a podcast in front of a live audience. There has to be kind of a multimedia element. There has to yeah. be, you know, visuals and an interview portion. And there's no better guest than someone who won an Emmy for their multimedia journalism. So yeah. we can drop the, the, the big screen, the projection mm -hmm. screen and show some of her stories. And I'm just super excited to talk to her and it's, we're still five months away from the event. And oh, yeah. I just have, I, I want to talk to her so bad about <laughs> just journalism in general and her travels. And I'm like, no, I gotta wait. I gotta yeah. wait for the live event that and just ask seems, all my questions there. That just seems crazy big for, uh, for Greenfield, just yeah, in general, oh, yeah. crazy just big to for have us. An Emmy but, winner, like yeah, yeah. is that you talking about? Like just the the magnitude of someone who graduated yeah. from Greenfield to go on and and be very successful in their field and then come back and it's very cool for us to we can talk to an Emmy winner. Yeah, like that's really really cool. And just the things that she's done, um, she above and beyond her journalism, she went to school to be a missionary as well, oh, wow. I, like later on in life, wow. after she uh, graduated from the University of Iowa for journalism. So she's done a lot of mission work and she's traveled there and just the opportunity to talk to her about some of the places that she's been with that too, is just going to be really, really exciting. And people just love Wendy and yeah. love, love her dog, um, <laughs> see her around town. So um, I'm hoping that people that maybe know Wendy will come out and get to learn a little bit more about her because that's, that's the true spirit of our podcast is bringing yep. our friends on and 
we learn new things about them. Yeah. They share a side of themselves that maybe people haven't seen before or don't know. I think I think back to like J.R. Hicks is a good example oh, yeah. of that. Jordan Bovey is a good example Jordan's of that. Jordan's a perfect um, example. It's a goofy, silly boy episode, but like the Jack Stamper episode, you mm -hmm. get to see a side of him that maybe people that work with him um, Never got at, to at see, the factory yeah. don't get to see. So uh, this this guest just, just fits that box yep. so well. Um, so that's the live podcast portion of it. The live band, uh, like I said, is a band that I worked with. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of like a homecoming. I, I wanted to work around this homecoming theme. So I was like, all right, well, when we were in high school and we would be going to these homecoming dances, what kind of music were we listening to in 20, you know, 2006, 2007? Yeah. Well, it's like emo. It's yeah. pop punk. Pop, pop. pop punk. So yeah. Night Like This does a lot of those like late 90s, early 2000s pop punk covers mm -hmm. um and they've recently added a drummer to oh, their sweet. ensemble originally it was just uh you know it was a singer two guitarists and uh they've added a drummer they've really rounded out their their sound and awesome what they bring to the table so it's going to be even bigger and better than what i remember from working wow. you know where i worked before but they were my favorite band just to work with they were just super cool guys and then their performance was high energy and a lot of fun so um night like this from des moines iowa will be the live band and uh it's going to be awesome. I, I really hope that, you know, I've been to some, some events at Warren Cultural Center and sometimes there's chairs and there's tables out. Yeah. I don't want that. No. For this event, I want people up. Like I wanted to, them to feel like true rock stars and people up, you know, yep. crashing this, not crashing the stage, but you but, know, up to the stage yeah. and dancing and like the old eighties photos where the people are like reaching up towards yes, the stage yes, exactly. and like that's screaming. Exactly yeah. Want. Yeah. And it's exactly what I want. I want to bring, um, TJ really inspired me. Thaddeus really inspired oh, yeah. me with the, the first underground show. That was a I want to bring that. It was such a fun night. It was such a fun night. It was. Um, you know, hawking our merch, selling stickers, and reconnecting with people that have already bought our merch. Shout out to like Morgan and her Morgan mom. Morgan and her mom. Yeah. Yeah. She shows up wearing the ice cream Sunday shirt. Yep. We get that selfie mm -hmm. with her. Um, there's a lot of support for oh, yeah. what we do in Greenfield. And some of that, I, I would assume a big portion of that is the fact that we grew up in there that area yep. but then i feel like a lot of the stories that we tell and and um the things that we're interested in and we talk about on this podcast it resonates with people there too yeah so i really hope that that translates to people coming out and partying with us for a night because i hope so that's I, above and beyond like promoting ourselves and our podcast i just want to provide a really fun night for the community I grew up in. So I didn't grow up in Greenfield. I grew up in the town Creston. That's just what 30 minutes bitch. south. Not even 30 minutes, like 20 tops. 20, it's a, it's, 22 miles. It's yeah. about 30 if you're actually following the law. Yeah. <laughs> Who follows the law? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's the most boring I'm an drive. old man. Yeah, <laughs> Look, guess. there's two ways you get to Creston. It's either cutting through Orient or going around towards Stewart Road. Yeah. And then that right... Yep. Yep. Yeah, but growing up there, it's a close community. Mm -hmm. We're all in you know Southwest Iowa. There's never been anything that I can remember remotely like this. So yeah. the idea and the thought that this is going to be a yearly thing, uh, and maybe other people who might have podcasts or have something yeah. like this might be able to go, hey, this is something we can do. Yep. Um, it's always it, it's always good to to see that kind of stuff, especially you know. There's a lot of bad things that happen down there because there's not a lot of things to do. Sure. So I think it's it's going to be a great thing for many communities around. And above and beyond promoting ourselves, mm -hmm. promoting Wendy, promoting Night Like This, I want to promote, A, the Warren Cultural Center because I think it's a beautiful oh, building. It's beautiful. And it provides something that you don't always see in, no. in rural, rural is, they did communities. such a like good job keeping that building yes, together and just absolutely it looks like you're stepping back in time and so i want to promote them and so mm -hmm. all of the elements that we have of this show you have the the art vendors which is going to be out in in the, the lobby area you have the live podcast and the live um band which is going to be in the auditorium mm -hmm. like the main event space but then like i said TJ and a, a team of people who live in that community and have wanted this like younger style of music um, have opened up 
the basement, yeah. the underground. And Which, so we're doing something there as well. And so I wanted to highlight every square inch of that building oh, yeah. and, and show people. And, and this is not to put down the programming that the Warren Cultural Center usually puts on. But I feel like it, it is catered more toward an older crowd. There's a lot of our friends that are going to be coming to that building for the very first time yeah. that live in that yeah. community. Yeah. You know, it's been open for now 12 years as of 2024. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people our age that have never stepped foot yeah. in that building. I lived there since 2017. I didn't even know what was a building until like you guys had mentioned it. I thought it was yeah. like a place people had weddings and that was it. Yeah. And just like, an event space. Yeah. And yeah, then it was sure. like, okay, just a beautiful cool. building to have events in. Yeah. yeah. So if, if our event is even remotely close to, uh, what the first underground showing was. Oh my yeah. goodness. I, I would consider that that a success because even though it was planned, even yeah. though we knew certain people were going to be there, uh, it was still a surprise to see the amount of support. And oh, that yeah. is such a good yep. thing to have. Um, with um, ours, in my mind, with ours being on a much bigger scale for that place, yeah. I'm hoping we still we want to expect a lot of people, uh, but we also want to be surprised. Yeah, yeah. By the people, I think I, I want that curtain to open. We step out on stage and we're like, Holy "Good shit. God!" Like, oh my gosh, there's way it's way even bigger scale than we imagined yeah. it was going to be. You know, um, yeah. The the thing that TJ and I talked about. Uh, about the first underground show is there was a lot of people that truly despise metal music. Oh yeah. And they came because a, it's something to do B they're friends with TJ and they want to support him. Mm -hmm. The thing I love and have always loved about the community that we grew up in for all of its faults, they truly support their own. And oh, yeah. the fact that we're going home to Greenfield resonates with a lot of people. Um, do you remember Mrs. Howe? I do. So I went down to Greenfield for a, it was a basically a, a check ceremony is what they called it. Uh, it's the Empowering in Dare County nonprofit organization. And they were giving grants to a bunch of nonprofit organizations. And the Warren Cultural Center happened to be one of them. And the event was at Warren Cultural Center. And I just happened to be the representative from the board of directors that came and accepted our grant, our grant money from them. And Kath Howe was there. And she's, she goes, why are, why are you here? And I was like, I'm accepting a grant, the grant. She goes, on behalf of who? And I was like, we're, the building that we're in. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I didn't even know you were back in town. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not, but, and she was just like, it is awesome to have, you know, new eyes on the board of directors to oh, yeah. see different things and to bring new ideas. And I told her about this event before we even announced it publicly. And she was just like, I don't know if she got it a hundred percent. But I'm like, so I have this podcast and we're bringing a uh, live podcast recording. It's basically kind of sort of like a TED talk, but kind of like a, a talk show with a live studio audience for yeah. an hour. And there's a live band. And she was just like, she, I, she just kind of smiled and nodded and was like, I don't know all the words you're saying, <laughs> but I like that you're doing it here. <laughs> and that meant the world to me that it's like the community does support this. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people are going to show up just because they're our friends. Mm -hmm. But I feel like an equal amount are going to show up because this is something new mm -hmm. to do in, in Greenfield, in this, in Southwest Iowa as a whole. I want the people that are showing up for us to be just as surprised about what we pro you know provide as the people who don't know us very well, yep. because I have a lot of people I work with a handful, at least who are like, yeah, we're going to come, you know, we're going to be there. And it's like, I know for a fact, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Yep. And I, I just want them to be like, number one, wow. Number two, yep. did not expect that. And number three, I want them to be like, that was fun. I cannot wait till next year. So above and beyond, you know, promoting ourselves and promoting the band yeah. and even promoting the Warren Cultural Center, I just want to promote the community. Yeah. 
there's a lot because going on what there. the community has done to revitalize in the last i'd say 15 years has been really impressive mm -hmm. and that includes the warren cultural center that includes hotel greenfield mm -hmm. and so when we had our wedding we decided to have our wedding in Pella so all of our friends could come visit Pella, see where we live, and see just how special that community is. Yeah. And they stay at the hotel, and they eat at the restaurants there, and they see the park, and it's yep. just like, wow, like, you guys live in a really special community. Yep. I'm really excited for guys like Joe Moore yeah. from Minneapolis and Jonathan Dervetsky and people f that have never visited my mm -hmm. hometown, even like my college friends yeah. that might be coming that have never actually visited Greenfield to come to Greenfield and be like, you know what? I kind of see how you, how you turned out because you mm -hmm. grew up in this community. Like yeah. for, like I said, have I, have I mentioned that there was one particular very racist person in a position of authority in Greenfield when I yeah. was growing up. Sure. But for the most part, that community loved me mm -hmm. and I love that community. And every time I go back, and of course it has a lot to do with the fact that I still have a lot of friends there, but every time I go back, man, there's just, I feel nothing but love. And, uh, I want people to, to come to Greenfield mm -hmm. to see that and be like, all right, I get it. I totally get it. So we talked about uh, Wendy. Yep. We talked about the band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are we able to talk about who we're supporting and bringing in as like uh, like vendors and oh yeah and sponsors? So let's talk about vendors first, and then I'll I'll backtrack and talk about sponsors. But I want to talk about who people will see. So the way that we've set this up is that. Our live podcast is going mm -hmm. to start at 7 p.m. And then 7 to 8 p.m. is going to be our live podcast. We'll pull all our equipment off and then the live band will start and they'll play from 8 to 11. But before that, I want to get people in there. Um, the doors will open and I want them to really uh, see who's vending. Art, mm -hmm. you know, artists and um, music lovers. And there's just a ton of different different vendors and um the reason that I, I talk to the board of directors and usually their big auditorium shows are $20 tickets. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's do $10. A, and they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. And they, they're like, no, that's fine. And oh, they wow. were on board with it. So number one, I want them to take the other $10 that they would spend on a ticket and buy art, yeah. buy, you know, buy from our vendors, mm -hmm. buy concessions. And then also selfishly, we have an after party in the basement. And that's an additional fee on top of that $10 because yep. it's, it's basically an auditorium show mm -hmm. and an underground show. And those two, two elements, even though they're in the same building, they're kept separate. Mm -hmm. So I want, you know, I, I wanted to make it, uh, as, as economically possible for as many people as yeah. possible. So as far as the art vendors and different vendors go, um, the people that we have confirmed right now, and I still have a few that might jump on board later, but the people yep. that we have confirmed right now, as of this recording, um, one of the vendors, the first vendor is Electric Cutie Beauty. So that is for longtime listeners of the podcast, Abby Warner. Okay. So um, uh, the episode title, I can't remember the number, but the episode title is Painting Naked in the Woods. Okay. So right away, you know. She's a crazy one. <laughs> um, but Abby is, is good people. She makes some really, really interesting art whether it be painting on canvas or you know um deconstructing barbie dolls to make jewelry like oh, she cool. makes some really innovative stuff hmm. she has been a vendor at middle of the map tattoo convention okay. in des moines she's from the des moines area um and she has that life experience from mm -hmm you know, traveling around the country, living in a van. She makes some really, really cool stuff. Um, so the first vendor will be Electric Cutie Beauty, Abby Warner. Uh, we also have Vinyl Addict, which is Jay Ladd uh, from the Greenfield, Iowa area. Um, he'll be selling records and CDs. He's a okay. music lover. And so he'll be there. He is also a sponsor. So he awesome. is a vendor and a sponsor. Dope. Uh, we also have Lyric Clay Creations, uh, which is Lauren Huff. Okay. So obviously the Huff yep. family is yep. very yep. big, very important to the uh, Nottoway Valley community. So to have Lauren and her art there is going to be mm. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, face paints by Kate. Kate Allender is one of my dearest internet friends. I have not met this woman in person, <laughs> but I love everything she does. She is an incredible artist. Um, and she's also a musician that 
Spoiler. Um, we haven't. I haven't talked to TJ about this, but I want to get her down in the underground. She'd be perfect. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. She plays uh, banjo. Oh, and, oh uh, that's, very that'd be perfect. Cool. Americana music. She's that'd awesome. Be great. But uh, so she'll be painting faces. So I hope that awesome. I see hundreds of uh, ice this cream cones. Is, I, I want to mention because I have had these questions. Is this going to be a family friendly, all ages show? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, every auditorium show inside Warren Cultural Center is family friendly. So, of course, we want to be family friendly as well. Not every one of our podcasts is, but this one will be. Yep. Um, and the music that you hear there will be family friendly as well. So I'm hoping to see a bunch of little kids in the auditorium when we get on stage with their faces painted by by Kate. So That'd that be would so be awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then we have a couple podcasts. Um, obviously, we'll have our merch there. Yep. Uh, we'll have a table and um, I'll, I'll, I'll find some volunteers to run merch for us. Oh, yeah. Sell t-shirts, sticky boys, keychains, yep. um, all, all of the normal stuff. Um, and then against my better judgment, too many words will oh, be there. No. So Isaac and Jordan will be there with their merchandise. And um, if we I, have to cut anybody, it's them, right? Yes. <laughs> they are the they are the bottom rung. So if we do have <laughs> to move someone out of a position and and basically kick them out of a vendor spot, it will be too many words that will be the first ones eliminated. Uh, that is by design. So uh, <laughs> no, no, we uh, might just do it because. <laughs> yeah. No, Isaac and Jordan are yeah. good people. They have a great show. They're and awesome kids. Um, if you want a, uh, I would say 90% of their show is family friendly as well. They try to mm -hmm. keep it. You know, they're good Christian boys. So they're my grandsons. Uh, so. And then except for the episode that we're on. Uh, and then let's see green unicorn art. So I think you and Heather might know Dean. Um, yes. Sort of yeah. Yes. So uh, Dean actually reached out to me first um, because he, when he found out that we were having that live event, um, he, he messaged me was very nice. Uh, he is a, uh, an incredibly friendly and warm person. Um, and that's just from my limited interactions with him. Uh, he's very much into supporting friends, people, really anybody he can. Um, so when he approached me about it, I said, Hey, um, Austin's more kind of into the weeds, uh, with this. Uh, I will let him know, uh, we'll reach back out to you and um i'm i'm glad that you were able to connect with him and, yeah. and get a hold of him dean and i have become good internet friends and uh his art is great. I've seen a lot of the stuff that he's done. Um, I compare it to kind of like flash tattoos in a way. Yeah. Like some of his art, he just takes a marker and just doodles. And Whoa. it is, it's really, really cool. Really cool stuff. So I'm excited to see what kind of stuff he brings to sort of a um, art show <laughs> convention setting. Uh, it should be interesting to see. Now, I do have some other names on the list that I, I have not confirmed yet. If you are watching or listening to this podcast and you're like, why didn't they say my business? Well, I don't know. Maybe check your DMs. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll move into sponsors because this is the this is the backbone of the show. We could not yeah. do it without people supporting this financially. First and foremost, we have uh, three tiers of sponsors. So we've got one main title sponsor. Do we want to go with the... Uh lower sponsors and work our way up sure yeah right. so we got one main title sponsor uh and then there's four elements of the show there's the uh artist alley there is the live podcast the live band and then the after party so we have four presenting sponsors each of them present a different element of the show uh and then we have our general sponsors i want to mention right off the bat we are still accepting general sponsorships i'm hoping that when people see the number of tickets that are sold right out the gate, that more sponsor general sponsors will jump on board because um, we would love to promote as many small mm -hmm. businesses with this as possible. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we'll start with the general sponsorships that we have confirmed so far. First and foremost, like I said, J Ladd uh, with Vinyl Addict, uh, designs by Megan, who you guys have seen on the podcast. Yeah. Um, my family is a sponsor in memory of my grandfather. Awesome. Um, so That's shout beautiful. out to, to Trent Buckner and Ardeth Buckner. Um, real quick, just, this is selfish, but, um, these are the things that my grandfather would have loved. Yeah. He, he was on, you know, the school board and city council and all of those things. 
someone from the community bringing big city entertainment to small town and and doing something f for themselves sure but also just for the betterment of the community is something that he would have loved so to have his name in memory of him as a, as a sponsor um it personally means a lot to me um and brought me to tears when my uh my uncle and my grandma was like we'd like to do this in in your your grandfather's name um and then two nonprofit organizations from the Omaha area. Uh, the first one is In Christ Alone, um, which is a nonprofit uh, clothing brand, Christian clothing brand, and all of the money goes to you know Christian services and things like that. Um, and then also You Are Not Alone. So You Are Not Alone is a nonprofit uh, event that is a benefit for um, suicide prevention mm -hmm. services. And I don't know if he has announced it yet but uh we are going to be at that event in mm -hmm. omaha later this year yep. um i don't think it's a surprise and i don't think it would be a stretch to say that the four of us in this particular podcast family have all struggled oh, with yeah. some sort of mental illness had mental health issues so this is near and dear to our heart and when dustin uh, mcguire reached out and said hey i want to uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about dustin later because uh, he's a big part of this event but oh, when yeah. he reached out and he said hey above and beyond what i'm already doing i want to sponsor through my other business venture my other nonprofit venture I said, of course, mm -hmm. whatever we can do to help. Oh, and, yeah. um, so to, for him to be a big part of our event and for us to be, um, you know, a part of his event in Omaha means a lot. So those are our general sponsors. And like I said, um, there are still many spots still open for those, those $100 general sponsorships. Uh, moving on to the $250 presenting sponsorships, we'll start with the Artist Alley because people are going to see that when they come in the building first. So um, sponsoring and presenting the Artist Alley is Wandering Sage Massage. So it is a Des Moines area um, massage um, therapy business that is was started by um, Lorraine Moore. And uh, Lorraine used to go by a different name, Jesse Grasty. Um, she used to live in the Greenfield community, and she's we, someone coming back. Yeah, we've yeah, had many conversations home. about how, hey, I lived there, and there was nothing like that. Of course, there was, you know, karaoke at the <laughs> yep. at the bar, but there was nothing like this. And so, she's very excited to come back and experience something that like what we're doing. Um, Sponsoring the live podcast is a real one. Mm -hmm. The homie the who homie. you will hear in just a couple weeks on this very show. You've heard him. You've seen him before. He's back for a full length episode. Joe Moore, Rude Katana. Here's the thing. And I told this to him to his face. <laughs> There's two. We had a ton of people reach out for sponsorships. Oh, yeah. Wanting to sponsor, present the live podcast portion, the ice cream Sunday portion of the ice cream social. Mm -hmm. I said, there's two businesses that I'm, I'm holding out on. One of them never came through. And the other one was Drew Katana. Yeah. And, uh, I should mention that as also as a sponsor, he's going to have his merch there too. So awesome. he's going to come with boxes and boxes of t-shirts. They are really cool. If you're into anime, if you're into some weeb stuff, yeah, Japanese yeah. art, um, that's your man. You're going to love what he has to offer. Oh, yeah. And when you're there, talk to him for like five minutes. You'll, you're fall, gonna, in you'll fall in love with him. He's oh my the gosh. most humble dude. Oh my gosh. Like one of the most humble we've ever. I, I hate how humble he is. Yeah. Because that dude should. Like the first 20 minutes of the episode is him just that dude should just kiss like you guys are so cool yeah that dude should just walk head up chest out at all oh, he's, times because he's a beautiful man the art that he puts out is just incredible mm -hmm. and he's so charismatic and he's just he's so genuine and so nice and to have his clothing company be the presenting sponsor mm -hmm. of our one hour of dumb dumb stories on stage for the very first time I can't think of anybody better. Like, no, he was perfect. That's the dude. Um, 
promoting, presenting the uh, live band portion is 1% list Dream Street. So that is a real estate company. Oh, okay. And one of their realtors happens to be, uh, God, I'm going to butcher this last name, <laughs> Jordan um, Be Your Home, I believe is how you pronounce it. it used to be Jordan Broderson. Um, it is a very unique last name. And if I butchered it, I'm so sorry, Jordan. Um, Be Your Home? Be Your Home, I think so. Okay. Uh, but Jordan Broderson, for those that grew up in the Nanaway Valley <laughs> uh, area, and she reached out and was just like, I love everything that you're talking about uh, when it comes to doing a big event here. And and I said, do you want to sponsor the band? And she was all about it. Yeah. So um, I have loved that woman for many, many years. One of the uh, One of the best pictures I have from high school is me just making this big cheesy smile. And I have this... Uh, like a earmuffs thing, like a, like a sweatband, but it goes yeah. around your ears. Yeah. And like my hair was really long then. And you remember, like I used to spike it straight up. Oh, I think I've seen that picture. It, yeah. It's like, yeah. The, yeah. like a purple like shirt. The old yep. Yep. Mike Shinoda. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We're, Shinoda we're on a bus on. on our way to, uh, the state championship. So we, we played in the pet band at yep. the state tournament when our basketball team was really, really good. And it's just Jordan and I sitting on the bus next to each other and took that picture. Um, so I've, I've been close friends with her for, for many, many years and love her entire family. And so the fact that she got involved with this and, and much like Lauren Huff as a vendor, like yeah. families and, and friends that I, we've had, the two of us have had for many, many years, uh, you know, for them to be connected to this in some way is just, is really special, really important. And then last but not least, like I said, after the auditorium and all of that is over, we go downstairs and we party and we party. It's going to be great. And, uh, the after party sponsor, uh, the after party is presented by beat drop entertainment. So beat drop entertainment is a live entertainment production company, um, a DJ light sound, uh, out of the Omaha area. Yep. Dustin has been doing this for many, many years. He is great at it and I cannot wait to party oh, with yeah. Dustin. Um, I have seen him at many, many pro wrestling events because he provides live sound for a lot of the companies in mm -hmm. and around the Omaha area. Um, but I have never got to see him really do what he does best, yeah. which is curate music for a party. I've seen him obviously hit the play button and provide sound yeah. for, you know, wrestling entrance themes and things like that. But to really see him in his elements going to be a joy because I love that kid to death That's and he awesome. is one of the biggest supporters of ice cream Sunday. And Oh yeah. To have him on board is, uh, is a blessing. I think, I think one of the only other like biggest supporters would be Joe. Yeah. Foster. Foster. Yeah. Foster. Yeah. <laughs> Freshy Frost. Is he coming? Of course he's coming. Oh, uh, yes. So here's the thing. Uh oh. Uh, the reason that I chose like the weekend that we did is a, you know, it's, it's yeah. the first weekend of summer, but I also have to make sure for Joe that it's not the very end of the month because no matter what day of the week it is, if it is the last day of the month, he will be working trying to get those last oh, minute sales. Yep. So I was like, Joe, this is on the 22nd of the month. There's no excuse. And he's like, I will be there. There's no doubt about it. Sweet. So he's a man of his word too. I can't wait to party it up and with Joe Mandy Frishy, fresh. and the whole the whole clan that you saw at Halloween Palooza. Those like you know conservative estimate probably ten thousand children. Uh, they will all be <laughs> they will all be in attendance. Yeah. And then last but not least, the big one, the big one, the, the title me, sponsor. The Every Jesus single people. piece of media you see about this show will have. The Ice Cream Sunday Social 2024, presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery, which is the big Kahuna. Yeah, that's um, the that was awesome to hear that they were going to sponsor us. Do you have any idea how excited I am to like <laughs> just wander into Fairway and just see like our like flyers yep. and, and oh, yeah. Yeah. stuff? Um, Jordan and Isaac were talking about our event on too many words and how they were part of it as a vendor to be able to promote their podcast at mm -hmm. our show. And they're talking about the sponsors and they bring up the, the video, the, the video that we shot at Warren cultural center. Yep. And we'll get more into that. 
but the video that we shot there and at the end it brings up that it, that first pop of color mm -hmm. where it says the ice cream social you know presented by fairway meat and grocery and I think it was Andrew Syme who was like, they're sponsored by Fairway? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. That's really yes, wild. we are. Because like, I live in Greenfield now. If Fairway didn't exist there, we'd all die. Oh, like, yeah. There would be no food. Yeah. <laughs> like You'd have to go to Crestview. Yeah. And we'd all die. <laughs> and it was so, <laughs> like, I was, it was so nerve wracking because I'd never met uh, Nate or Heath, yeah. which are the two um, main managers there at the Greenfield store. And so I, I met them through Whitney Lewis, mm -hmm. who also works there and she does a lot with the underground. So that yep. was my connection to fairway was through Whitney. And I said, how do I get in contact with these guys? She goes, set up a meeting. Um, just let me know when you want to come in. And I think it was, we were leaving for twin cities gone. We were leaving for twin cities. You came and picked me up and right came, afterwards. Yep, yep. And I came and picked you up. And so, of course, that whole weekend, not only am I freaking out about meeting all these celebrities and things mm -hmm. like that, I'm, I'm freaking out waiting to hear back from Fairway the whole weekend. But um, so it's funny because after I heard about that on Too Many Words, then, of course, Jordan and Isaac were like, so how did you get that Fairway sponsor? And I was like, we I, sold. I asked. Like, it was it's as simple as that. I literally, I walked in and I just, I had a presentation ready, very similar mm -hmm. to what we did for the board of directors. And I said, here's what we want to do. And it's a live podcast and we're interviewing Wendy and she's from the community. And we really yep. want this to be to support the community, uh, which is something that Fairway has done many, many times in oh, the yeah. past, where it, whether it be school sports or, you know, the school musical or, or whatever it is, or, yeah. you know, a 5k race on the 4th of July, or, um, if it has to do with benefiting the community fairway is behind mm -hmm. it 100% and I would love for you guys to be on board with this and really the only question they asked was will this be a family friendly event because obviously mm -hmm. fairway's reputation is on the line sponsoring this as well and I said of course it, it will be and um Whitney Whitney called me back and um I think it was the Monday or Tuesday that next week yep and she said your presentation was trash and they'd love you to come back and try again and I was like absolutely like whatever I need to do. And she was like, you are the most gullible human being in the world. They were like, they loved it. Absolutely. Awesome. I will have your check ready for you. And so, um, I want to thank Whitney because yeah. without her, it, it wouldn't have been possible. And, um, yeah, just Nate and Heath being on board and, and having that big name. I mean, mm -hmm. it is an institution in Iowa, but like you said, if fairway wasn't there, we would literally all yeah. die. Yeah. Um, so to have a, a, a company, a big company like fairway that is, is important in the state of Iowa, but then locally super important to oh, yeah. the, the citizens, the community of Greenfield, uh, to have them on board with something like this means the world yeah. to us. Um, so officially, Fairway Meat and Grocery presents the Ice Cream Social 2024. Uh, to oh, even man. say those words is mm -hmm. insane. Oh, absolutely. I love the fact that when we started doing the podcast, of course, we're going to have big dreams of, of making it big, uh, celebrity, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and sure, we've had experiences that just no one else get. Uh you know, we, we've talked to celebrities. We've, we've connected with so many uh, different and unique people. We're sitting in Minneapolis, Minnesota for this episode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like and you're talking about crazy experiences. Like we're five hours away from home right now doing this well, episode. Well, the, the point I'm trying to make is, um, granted, we've had these experiences. It's amazing. It's, it's been huge for us. But there's something about our own event being uh, having the sponsors we have, having the support we have, having Fairway sponsor it uh, that just makes it feel so much bigger. Yeah, and oh, yeah. I it the it's not lost on us. No. Um. It, does it feel like gravity is set in yet? No. No. 
No. I don't no. think it will even when we get there. But so it is I think the moment the curtains open for you guys is when it's gonna start. I've gotta go out there and set up the cameras yeah. before the curtains <laughs> yeah. open. I'm going to be freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. Um we talked about this a little bit with Al Holly this mm. morning when we uh when we filmed that episode. Mm. Never take it for granted. No matter how good you get at all of yeah. this, how uh, no matter how second nature it becomes, never take it for granted. And adding more and more onto our plate and you know, like we started and it was just the three of us. It was just David and you and me yep. in your living room or my basement or David's uh, <laughs> dining area. David's dining area with the cicadas <laughs> way too loud. Uh, <laughs> and we got pretty good at that. And then we added on conventions. Mm -hmm. And Des Moines Con was super, super scary. And then we got pretty good at it. By, by the second the second big one, Twin Cities Con, got pretty good at it. Yeah. But we're still not taking it for granted. Mm -mm. The more and more new things we add on, and this is a new, big, crazy thing. Oh, yeah. Or it, 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 it reminds me of just how insane all of this is. Like, it doesn't make any sense because when it was our, our epic 14 episode run in 2016, <laughs> when it was just David and myself and Aaron, it, this wasn't even a thought of doing a live event. Like we, no way would we ever even think of this. Nope. It was, you know, we, uh, like Aaron and I eat a bowl of lucky charms <laughs> and David is, uh, outside smoking a cigarette. And then we all get together and we tell goofy stories for, you know, a few hours. Yep. Never in our wildest dreams would we have thought about doing a live event. And if I'm being completely honest with myself, I don't even think this a live event was something that we thought about when we started the new version of this in 2022. Um, but now we're at a point where it, we're not only planning live events, we're not only planning cons, uh, you know, as big of a dream as, as we have with where we want to go with the podcast, you know, we're now thinking of stuff we can do later. Yeah. Like, let's get a studio. Yeah. yeah. Let's, or these, or these weekend trips. Yeah. These weekend like trips. We're, we're getting better uh, equipment. equipment. Yeah. And we're, leave. okay, so we came up here the first time. I was just thinking about this this morning, how crazy it is that we came up here the first time and for Twin Cities Con, and we were a part of Twin Cities Con. Yeah. Um, we came up here this weekend just for the podcast. Like it, it was mm -hmm. our weekend. Yeah. And, and it wasn't like, yeah, we're just going to come up here. Like people like in a way, like invited us back to spend more oh, time yeah. with us. Like that does not, that's not lost on me. No. That like the people that we had 20 minutes with, like, like Joe Moore or the people that we had four minutes with like, like Al Holly wanted to talk to us again yeah like went to fogo with us like came out to eat yeah. like that was that was more personal than a podcast it was yeah. like hey we're gonna dress up nice yeah and we're gonna come eat with you guys and everyone was like to, to the nines to their credit i could have invited Kristen, l holly and ty her husband and been like and also there's a dress code and they could have been like you're dumb. That's dumb. <laughs> we're wearing whatever we want. Yeah. Or we're just not coming because why would you invite us yeah. to dinner? And it's a pretty expensive dinner. It right? was. It was not cheap. And so I don't know if you caught it. A uh, little side note. Yeah. Um, while I was talking with Kristen and Ty, uh, they were like, do we want to do the full experience? Or not? <laughs> and Ty was like, this is a moment. Let's just yeah, full send I, it. Let's do it. I think they both wanted, like, as soon as you said, hey, we're going to dress up, I think they were both like, you know what? Let's dress up. Yeah. Like, let's go. Because they looked, they were phenomenal. Phenomenal, everyone. Yeah. And so for, for us to travel five hours and for people to be like, I am excited to see you again. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm excited to not only within the realm of podcasting, but also like hang out with you as friends yeah. is wild. And so to translate that back to a live show, we had people coming from Missouri. Like I know for a fact people are planning to be there on June 22nd, 2024 in a town of 1800 people in the middle of nowhere to come see us from Illinois, from Missouri, from Minnesota, from Wisconsin yeah. to come see us. Not, we're not, they're not coming to be part of, uh, you know, okay. So I have friends, Cal, yeah. the Englishman yep, and Logan Davis, who was on this podcast before he runs mm -hmm. Magnum wrestling. Yep. They came and they stopped by our booth. Uh, and John Dervetsky came that. and uh, to twin studies con. Yeah. Did they come to see us? Sure. Maybe, but we were part of that event. Yeah. They were there to see Kevin Smith. Oh right? yeah. These people are traveling into our state from out of state to come see us, to come to Where Kevin our Smith. event. Yeah. We're the Kevin Smiths of Greenfield. That in and of itself is insane to think about. I feel like John Dravetsky came to Twin City Con for us. He went he and did. cooked he did, an entire he supper did for us. to drink and make us a meal. And I love that man for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love you, Kyle but Griffin. The fact that people are driving hours yeah. to be at this event. Mind blowing. Is mind blowing. It is unbelievable. Um, not not to end this podcast by patting ourselves on the back, but I think it's well deserved. Good job. <laughs> yeah, but like, what are we doing? Like, this is insane that we've we started in a basement mm -hmm. in a, or a living room or a dining area or whatever. And it's expanded to conventions, mm -hmm. you know, or trade shows or whatever, you know, whatever it, it becomes a yeah. nonprofit, you know, events. And then we decided to do our own and it's coming to fruition and it's still five months away. Yeah. But it feels like, God, it's right around the corner and it's going to be, it's going to go fast. It's going to be, yeah. Yeah. To, I can't wait until I wanted to wait until like probably February, March to actually get physical posters out. Obviously we've been doing a lot of promotion online, yep. but man, once we, once we get out and about in Southwest Iowa and start flyering and man, to see, to see the reaction that people have already had and, and that people will continue to have about this event, mm -hmm. ah, it just blows me away. Oh, it's going to be it blows phenomenal. Me away. Yeah. And, uh, even people that shouldn't have any grasp of what this is, I'm talking about my grandmother, uh, for, her, <laughs> for her to be like, this is really special for her to understand how much this means to all of us and for her to be on board with it. That's pretty cool Yeah, to be like, you're coming back to your hometown and you're doing something very special for your hometown. And, um, yeah, for her, for her to grasp that what we're doing is, is, is bigger than us. It's bigger than the cultural center. Like yep. that's pretty special. So yeah. yeah, I cannot wait. If you're listening to this on the day that it comes out, tickets are on sale tomorrow. If you are not listening to this on the day it comes out, tickets are on sale now. Uh, tickets go on sale January 22nd warrenculturalcenter.com uh, there will be a link under tickets you will see ours somewhere on that website nancy i'm hoping and praying you get this right um, <laughs> that the, there should be a link that says the ice cream social 2024 it should take you to an eventbrite.com link where you can buy tickets buy your tickets early i am positive this will sell out wherever this video is Check the description below. Yes. We will get a link down there we if we can have a, a link. clickable link in it. Yes. Yes. Um, the, the link will be everywhere. Yep. Um, if you want to read more, if you, if you see this or hear this episode and you want to read more about what this show is and what you can expect, all of that information is on our website. It is 
icecreamsundaypodcast.com. We also have a Facebook event. If you're on mm -hmm. Facebook, um, the name of the event is The Ice Cream Social 2024 live podcast and live music event. So you can find us uh, pretty much everywhere on social media mm -hmm. at uh, the letter I, the letter C, Sunday podcast. Um, there is information everywhere. Everywhere. And if you still can't find it, don't feel, know what to tell you. Feel free to DM one of us. Uh, this is all of my effort for the next five months is going into this live event to make this first one special. Um, I want this to be the event that years from now, when we're still doing this event, mm -hmm. bigger and better, 10 years from now, people go, yeah, this is cool. But man, you should have been there for the first one. Yep. I, I want people to talk about this event like like you showed up at the first warp tour. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want this to be like, yeah, this is this is pretty sick, but that first one was we were part of something. Yeah. Um, and if you wanna come be part of what I hope becomes an annual event and an annual celebration for the community of Greenfield, for the for the whole Nottaway Valley oh, yeah. community. Show up June 22nd, 2024 in Greenfield, Iowa, and you're going to have an unbelievable time. Um, and I, I know we'll get into this, uh, you know, in further episodes, but uh, if you want to show support for us, um, please, again, go to our website, uh, look into the event, stuff like that, but buy our merch. Yeah. Like we want to see so many people out there yes. like with our stuff on just to show support. I mean, we will be selling it there as well. Yeah. Don't be one of these people. They're like, I can't, I can't wear ice cream Sunday podcast merch to an ice cream Sunday podcast show. We're not like a dumb indie band concert. Like, you can wear our merch. We yeah. encourage you to wear our we merch. Just, please wear do. That would be so wear our cool. Merch. Yeah. Because uh, I'm sure we're going to want to get pictures with as many people as possible oh, that yes. have our stuff on. Absolutely. We're going to have better cameras then, so we'll yeah. have yeah. a photo camera yeah. at that point. I I can't wait. Yeah. So icecreamsundaypodcast.com forward slash shop. Um, we've got everything. Mm -hmm. We've got the hats that you see us wearing. We've got beanies. We've got hoodies. Kitchen aprons. We got baby onesies. Baby onesies. We got little little pup bandanas. Oh yeah. Uh, stickers. Stickers. Keychains. Key chains. Yeah. Um, we may be working with Rude Katana on a shirt that is exclusive <laughs> to the live event in June. Um, we got a lot of things. And if you don't see it there, let me know and uh we'll, we'll get, get it, it for you. So uh yes, any and all support of this podcast has blown me away and will continue to blow me away until the day we decide to stop doing this um it's never it's never for life for the nwo <laughs> <laughs> um but it is just it it still blows me away every day um i upload the audio and i see the number of people that that listen and and download the audio mind-blowing mind and then i see the number of people that watch the the tiktoks oh and my the, gosh and the reels and the youtube shorts and it's just mind-blowing yeah. and um that number just continues to grow week in week out um and that makes me feel really good leading mm -hmm. into the biggest risk that we've ever taken as far as this live event goes and so i just hope that i just hope that people come out not only to support us but just to have a really good time because yeah. if this live event is half as fun as the fun we have just sitting in a living room <laughs> recording this podcast every week. It's going to be the best time you've ever had. So I can't wait. Me neither. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm.